welcome to this mini PD. We are going to do um, Flipgrid for the Canvas LTI today. So um, basically I'm gonna go through kind of a little introduction and then turn the time over to Chandra to go through that LTI. Uh, she has added me as a student in the course that she's working in. So then I can show kind of what the student view or the student side looks like. Um, yeah, so I'm going to share my screen and then pull up our little presentation. Um, if you have questions, if you don't mind, ask them in the chat. I will be kind of monitoring that and politely interrupting Chandra if there's questions that are for the whole group that we can address. Um, so just type those in the chat and I'll keep an eye on that while she's presenting. So uh, once again, you are in a 30 minute little Canyons U mini PD. The other day in Tech Summit, if you went in person or online, uh, they referenced Canyons U. You got an email the other day from Justin that says Canyons U is open. That is a course in Canvas that is open. These are just additional little mini PDs that were hosting um, to help support with topics that you um, would be working on, you know, starting right now. Um, but look for that email. It came on Tuesday from Justin and that will give you access to several other resources. So uh, I'm gonna skip actually over, well, no, actually I'm not. Um, just as a reminder that in another email from your ed tech coach that you got uh, there are several other Canyons U mini PDs that are offered. We did a few this week. Uh, we're repeating some next week. And now that school has pushed back a little bit, we're trying to discuss the best way if there's more options that we can do that following week. Um, so stay tuned and watch for more information on that. Uh, just as a reminder, all, all of the things we do in Canyons come back to this multi-tiered system of supports you should be familiar with this document here. Um, again, this is the little flyer that came in that email that has all of the scheduled 30 minute little mini PDs. Uh, they are being recorded. So if you miss it or if you need to refer back to it, uh, you'll get an email or some communication that shows where these um, mini PDs will be housed so that you can come back to them at your convenience. So today, again, we're gonna do the Canvas um, Flipgrid LTI. And our learning intentions for today, you will uh, create an account in Flipgrid if you have not already. Chandra will show you how to integrate Flipgrid into Canvas using an external app, which there are several of, but the one we're gonna be focusing on is uh, Flipgrid today. We're gonna create a Flipgrid assignment and then show you how to use SpeedGrader in Canvas to view those submissions that your students submit in Flipgrid. So you uh, will know you're successful when you can create a Flipgrid assignment and use SpeedGrader to view those submissions. Are there any questions before I turn the time over to Chandra? Um, just a reminder, I'm Danae. I'm an ed tech coach um, in the elementary setting. Uh, both Chandra and I have been, we started at the same time. So this is, we're going into our ninth year and I'll let her kind of give you a little hello from her and she'll get started. Yeah. So I am Chandra Martz and like she said, I am an ed tech. Um, I am el elementary this year, which last year I was secondary. So I'm bouncing back down to elementary. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and get started with our Flipgrid. I'm going to go ahead and present my screen. And we're going to start today on Flipgrid.com. So if I go to um, Flipgrid.com, you can go ahead and sign up. Um, First of all, a little introduction of what Flipgrid is. Basically, Flipgrid is a way to get your students talking, whether it is um, in a blended environment or like an online environment. It's getting your kids being able to talk to one another. So you um, would put up a prompt or an idea or a concept that you want them to discuss. They're able to respond back to you. And if you set it up to do so, they're able to respond back to each other as well. 
So when you are creating your Flipgrid account, you can just simply come over to the right hand side and click on educator sign up. When you click on educator sign up, um, I would highly suggest just having you sign up with Google using your CSD docs account. So when you do that, it's just going to ask you to link your account and it will automatically do a little sign in for you. That will take you to a screen that looks a lot like this one. It's going to look a little bit different because I already have one, but it will look very, very similar. <clears throat> um, the first thing it's going to have you do is it's going to um, have you create your um, first group. So if I come back to um, the main page, um, it will probably have you create a group to begin with. Um, and it won't let you do anything else until you have that group. When I create a group, um, I can choose to have it on private or public. I would highly suggest just having it private for now. And um, you can create your group name. So maybe I want this to be Mart's. 20-21. It doesn't really matter because what's going to end up happening is when we get inside of Canvas, it's technically going to create a brand new group for you anyway. So right now, it's almost like a formality until we get it into Canvas. So once I've done that, I've created a group name. I can create a join code if I want to, but like I said, it's not going to matter because we're going to use it inside of Canvas. Um, it's going to make you decide how you want your students um, to log in. Again, this doesn't matter, but go ahead and put student email and then click on the next button. <clears throat> From there, because I logged in with CSD Docs, it should automatically populate with at csddocs.org. But you can change it to, or if it doesn't, go ahead and just type in at csddocs.org and then click on your next button. Um, it, you can select topics if you want to, or you can just leave it there. Um, I would just skip this for now because it's really not going to matter. And I can go here to where it says go to group. And now it's creating it um, a new group for me. It used to be called a grid, but they've changed it. So if you have used this prior, what we're creating used to be called a grid. So now we are ready to take it. So we are going to do that integration. Notice I'm not really doing anything on Flipgrid yet um, because everything we do is technically going to go through that Canvas side of things. But things that you need to have is right up here um, under your profile in the top right hand corner is your integrations button. So what I will do is I'm going to click on integration and I'm going to need these two consumer and secret codes. So I can, let's copy that first one first. So under consumer key, I'm just going to click on my copy button. Now what I'm going to end up doing is coming over to my course, my Canvas course. And once you get into your Canvas course, you're going to come down to your settings. When I get to my settings, I'm going to click on apps. <clears throat> Once I'm in apps, now I'm going to be able to search for Flipgrid. For most of you, it's going to say not installed. Um, if it says installed, you're good to go. If it says not installed, you'll go ahead and click on it and you'll click on your add app button. Chandra? Yes. I'm going to have you go back to Flipgrid and start going from the profile again. Just repeat those instructions. Yeah, perfect. No problem. Thank you. Okay. So when you're in your Flipgrid, it's going to look something like this. Right up here on the right hand side is my profile. So I'm going to click on my profile and then I'm going to click right here on integrations. That my uh, screen doesn't have integrations. Is there, uh, did I do something wrong? Um, does it maybe possibly show up under your profile? <clears throat> Let 
My profile says discussion, discovery, activity, mixtapes, shorts. Are you logged in with your CSD Docs account? Yes. Okay, I might have to play with that in just a second with you. No worries, sorry, I'm probably the outlier. I just, that's where I got lost because I couldn't find it. <laughs> Are other people having that same issue? I can see integration, but then it just says make one. There's like nothing in there to, it says no no Canvas integration yet. Let's create oh. one. So. Okay, Maybe. so if that's the case, you can come right here and say add new integration. Okay, but then it asked me for a name. And then just yeah. go ahead and give it a name. So if you okay. look at mine, I named it Mart's Test because I had no idea what I was doing at the time. <laughs> so you can just name it like your last name or Canvas or whatever you want. It's just for you to have this consumer code and the secret okay. shared code. Okay, I'm caught up. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So now once I have that, I'm going to click on the copy button. So a, a, a suggestion came in that she saw dis discussion, discovery, activity. Um, Aaron, over on the right hand side, there's like a emoji with smi a smiley face with sunglasses. When you click on the sunglasses, do you see integrations? No, that's where I see the discussion, discovery, mixtapes. Okay. I'm going back to my account settings because I'm not sure maybe I didn't complete something in there and that's why it's not giving me those options yet. Yeah, you may also try logging out of your Flipgrid at the bottom of that little list and then logging back in. No worries. I'll figure it out. I'm sorry to okay. take time. No, nope, no worries. And we can stay on too after if we need to troubleshoot. Yeah, for sure. All right, so I'm um, just following this process. I'm on my little guy, I click on integration. If you needed to, click on add new integration. Go ahead and do that. Name it, and then you have the two consumer key and shared secret. So we're gonna copy that first one, that um, consumer key. And now I'm coming back to my Canvas course. So I'm gonna give you like 10 seconds just to get into a Canvas course. Um, I would highly suggest just doing this in your sandbox until you know exactly what's happening with it so you can play with it. But you're going to come here to our settings and then apps. Do I need to wait for a second to get people there? Um, Danielle said, when I click integrations, should we see a new group we just created? She sees the old ones from last spring only. I don't think it matters if you just use one of the old ones because you're going to kind of be creating a new one in you're your creating a new assignment. So it doesn't really yeah. matter. So it doesn't matter, Danielle. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So now I'm in my apps. So now I'm going to search for Flipgrid. And like I said, mine's already installed, but yours is probably not installed yet. And it, that's okay. All you need to do is click on it and then it will say add app. Now this is where my consumer key and my shared secret are gonna come in. So now I can just go and paste it. I'm just gonna use command V and command V is going to paste that in there for me. If you were on a PC though, you could do control V and it will pop up as well. Now I'm gonna go back to Flipgrid and I'm gonna grab this shared secret this time. I'm gonna copy that in. I'm gonna come back to my course and I'm going to do a command V again and paste that one in this time. I'll give you just a second to do that part. All right, so once I've done that, I'm going to click on this Add App button. I'm not going to do it just because it will add it a third time for me, and I don't want that to happen. When I added it again, showing another group, notice that I have two of them over here now. And so I, if you only want one, which is what you do want, you want to make sure that you don't add it a second time. <clears throat> 
All right. So I've heard this both ways, but sometimes teachers are not able to get their flip grid to work immediately unless they move it from their navigation from the um, hide items up to the top. So I would highly suggest that for our first piece, in order for it to show up, you can move it from the bottom down here. So um, it will show up in that bottom section. Just click and drag it up and then it will show up for you in our next spot. Once you've done that, go ahead and click on the save button. <clears throat> now I'm gonna show you this, but realize that it usually takes from that integration for it to actually connect with Flipgrid. It could take up to about four hours is what I've seen in order for it to work. So don't think that just because we just did it that you're gonna see everything immediately. It might take you just a little while. So now I'm ready. I have um, got my Flipgrid account created and I have done the integration process with Canvas. So now I'm ready to create that assignment for my students. So as you've probably been doing all along, you're gonna go into modules to create your assignment. So then it's gonna show up in the module that you want it to. And then you can come over to the right hand side over here and click on the plus button to create a new assignment. This is like you create the assignment every single time. So I'm gonna do new Flipgrid assignment. And now I am able to add that item in. I'm gonna pull it up to the top of that just so um, Danae can see it a little bit easier. And Let's real see. quick, Krista, if it's not in the navigation screen or on the left-hand menu, Debbie suggested refreshing the page, if you're able to do that. Like I said, sometimes it takes a little while. Don't try to redo it right now. Otherwise, it's going to cause issues and you're going to have more than one flip grid it'll, that you're trying to decipher between. Yeah, it'll just keep duplicating it. So just be patient. And in fact, some of them didn't even need to do that. So... It's like been a little bit different on the um, three different PDs that I've done with this. So just kind of be patient with it, but know that the process should be pretty similar. Okay, so now that I'm creating my assignment, I can come in here and add the text that I want. So um, complete the Flipgrid assignment below. Then I can give it a point value if I choose to do so. I can come down here now and say my submission type. I know a lot of you have probably used the external tool before when you're finding Google, but this time we're going to look for that Flipgrid LTI. So I'm going to now scroll down and I will click on my Flipgrid. Notice I have two because I messed it up that one time. But I'm going to click on my Flipgrid and I'm just going to say select. Now when I do this, I can still follow the rest of my instructions. But as soon as I click my save button, it's going to put that Google L or that Flipgrid LTI in here. But notice I wasn't able to do anything with it yet. But now that I've saved it, now's when I, now is when I'm going to be able to go in and edit that Flipgrid assignment to be whatever I want it to be. And this looks exactly like it would on Flipgrid. So if I were to come over to Flipgrid right now and I were to go to my Flipgrids, it's going to look the exact same way where I'm able to edit my assignment. But we're doing it inside of Canvas. So here's my assignment. I'm going to come over to the right hand side, not this edit assignment settings, because that's going to take us to the canvas side of things. But I'm going to click on the little pencil right here to be able to add edit my assignment here. So now I could change my title if I wanted to. 
Maybe this is about a compare and contrast um, the north and south. Okay. Actually, I messed. I have too many words. But compare and contrast. And then I can go in here and put my prompt in there. And that's going to be anything you want them to know. I would highly suggest keeping the piece that's already in there and just click and um, enter that down and then write anything you want to above it. Just because this gives the instructions. Click the green plus to record a video or and submit your assignment. So they know exactly that Canvas created this assignment and they're going to record using the green button. So what you're going to want to do is go through. How long do you want it to be? Do I want it to be something super fast like an exit ticket that's only a 15 second thing? Or do I want them to actually take the time and maybe they're doing a auto, an autobiography or maybe they are describing their math problem um, and how they solved that story problem. So maybe that's going to be a two minute video, et cetera. But create your video or create your time um, for what you want it to be. If you really want it extensive, there's up to 10 minutes. But remember that you're going to watch all of these. So how long do you want it to be? But the, um, the normal time is that one minute and 30 seconds. Um, video moderation basically means that until you approve those videos, that the students will not be able to see them. So that's something that you're going to need to build um, that relationship with your students um, to be able to say whether you want to have to preview all of those or not. This media right here is all stuff that you could bring in for your students. So maybe you want to give them instructions by uploading a video or recording a video. You can do that too. Or maybe you just want to add a small emoji so they know what they're looking for because you have certain icons that your students look for to know it's an assignment. Your access control, I would go ahead and keep that on private. I wouldn't really necessarily worry about that. If you need any attachments, I saw some people who attached like um, a UEN article that the students would read. You could put that link in there and title it. And, or like a PDF or something, you could add a PDF up. Where did it go? Um, you could add a PDF up here on the media section. And you could just upload that PDF like with Google or something like that if you wanted to. Anyway, once you have that how you want it to be, um, you can go ahead and click on Save. Um, these video features right here, are the ones that you probably want to pay the most attention to. Um, so are students able to edit their videos? Um, are other students able to comment to one another? So if you want it just to be something that goes straight to you, you would probably turn off those comments. If it's something you want to be more of a discussion, then you would turn those comments on so they're working with each other on those. Um, I, Usually turn off view count so students don't see how many views that they've had so they don't feel bad with the popular kid versus the not popular kid. Um, I usually turn off likes and sticky notes would allow um, students to add those sticky notes while they're recording. So um, as like if I were recording a video as a student, I would be able to add things to it um, to help make it make more sense. But again, Students could also goof, goof off with that. So you might want to be careful with that one. And one thing I just want to add with that, Chandra, is you know all of these settings are here, obviously, for you to turn on and off and utilize or not. Um, before you just start an assignment, you know, I feel like that you need to have that discussion with your kids. It's a great opportunity to pull in that digital citizenship and you know online safety because you know if, if you're choosing moderation obviously you're going to have to moderate it first but eventually you want to get to the point where they're having those discussions and that conversation of you know what what happens online stays online and what everybody what you post everybody can see um i wouldn't just make an assignment right off the bat without any previous you know instruction once they get used to it 
it's a great tool. You can utilize it every day, every week, or, you know, multiple assignments, mm -hmm. but it definitely needs some, you know, instruction up front. Right. Um, as for this feedback right here, um, this is feedback like a rubric style that shows up within Flipgrid. I would highly suggest just kind of turning these off if you can. I don't even know if you can. Um, and instead of using Flipgrid's rubric, if you're going to add a rubric, add the Canvas rubric before even creating the assignment. And a lot of times you can just create a Flipgrid rubric that you use class after class or assignment after assignment because basically those ideas are staying the same with that inside of Flipgrid anyway. Um, and then once you're done, you just update the topic. Um, I can go back to my modules now I because I didn't publish it before, but now I can come in and publish that assignment where Danae would be able to see it as the student. So once you have your assignment done, or once you have it done that the students are able to um, go in, notice that speed grader is right here. And basically, it just shows um, each of their videos. If they re respond to someone else on their um, assignment, it will actually have multiple submissions up here that say, um, submission one, and you would have to go back because their first submission is this submission that they did um, to post in the first place. And then anything after that are all comments to other students. So just be aware of that and not only look at their last submission. But Chandra, do you want me to pull my side up a minute? Yep. So that's the basics okay. from the teacher side. So Danae's going to take a minute and just show you what that looks like from the student side. I was trying to get it pulled up while she was chatting too. Okay, so I now am Chandra's student in the class. I went to the modules section. And again, this will be dependent on how you have everything set up, but I knew she put it in modules. It's the first one here under the Canvas LTI examples, the new Flipgrid assignment. So I'm going to click on that. Again, I'm the student here. I see that it's in the course that she or the, the group that she had put it in. There's my compare and contrast with the directions. Um, these were the ones that kind of automatically popped in and she didn't, and this point didn't choose to add more just for the example, but you would see your written directions here. And then it, um, I can record a response here. Once the responses are starting to pop in, you'll see them down below. And then really that's the end of it. So, you know, in the directions, you're going to say, you know, read these two articles, compare and contrast, and you'll have a minute and 30 seconds or whatever. So now as the student, I'm going to choose record. And I'm not sure if it's going to pick up my voice because I'm on Google Meet right now as well, but we'll see what happens. Gives them a little countdown. And here I am giving my compare and contrast response. I'm going to pause that as the student, choose next down, and oh, here I am. There we are. My compare and contrast. We're going to just keep scooting along that. <laughs> Step four, get a repeat of everything. Step three out of four is to take a little selfie picture that will go with your submission, and you have to do that. So let me take my little picture a minute. Oh, not that one. Well, we'll just we'll just go with it. Oh no, here's redo selfie. Okay. <laughs> That's a little better. <laughs> It'll upload. There's my name, my email, and I'm going to submit that. It gives me that kind of confetti, ta-da, and complete. So now Chandra, if you want to quickly bot back over so you can show them what that speed grader looks like. Let me make sure it popped up. Okay, yep. So now I'm going to present again. Okay, so now when I go into um, my gradebook and I go into my speed grader for this assignment, notice that hers auto populated. Um, like I said, it, she would have commented on other people's. So notice this says submitted here at the time. 
but if she would have um, commented on other people's, it would have had the mul there would have been multiple here. So you want to just make sure you go back to the first one to see her original submission. And then I can go ahead and click the play now, button. And here I am giving my compare and contrast. And I don't know if you could have you could hear that or not just because of the way Google Meet is set up, but I could hear it and then I just go here and I can give her a grade. Again, like I said, if you were to do it, I would highly suggest using the rubric so they know what they're being graded on and use the Canvas rubric instead of the Flipgrid one. It's just going to make it a little bit easier for you when it comes to your grading. But so Chandra, a question came in and I'm not 100% sure on the answer. Do you need to do that integrate Flipgrid with every course? Um, I th think it should automatically pop up. I, I, I think that's I what I'm before. leaning for too. That's what I'm leaning towards too. It'll yeah. just be part of your navigation. Yeah. If it's it not, then we know we were wrong and we apologize. Um, but one thing that you do need to make sure you do, let me go back really quickly, is once you have, um, once you have it for sure showing up in your assignments where you clicked on the external tool, I would highly suggest taking it from your settings and I would take it off of your navigation because it's already there and you don't want the kids going to the left hand side to get to Flipgrid. You want them going into modules and assignments like they normally do. Um, one thing that you do need to know is if they decide to go to the left hand side and find it in this left hand sidebar it will not show up in your screen or in your speed grader. It will show up. Let me go back to modules. And that's one reason too, we have that canvas style guide and that was not listed as one of the options. Even if this is a tool you tool you use all the time, you're wanting to guide them to go through the assignment. If not, it kind of messes things up. Right. So in my flip grid, when I went into that assignment, I would see her name here, but if she did it from the left-hand um, bar over here, that navigation, I would see it here, but when I went into speed grader, it would not show up. So just be aware of that, um, that they need to make sure that they get to Flipgrid from the assignment. So to clarify, are you saying we need to move it up when we we assign one and then move it back down after the assignment's made? So right. on some of my teachers, when I did, or let's see, when we went in to find, let me create a new assignment really quickly. But when we went to create a new assignment and we came down here to the external tool, we did not find Flipgrid right here. And so when we, um, when I did some searches, what they told us to do is move it from the nav or move it into the navigation bar. And then it worked for us. And after we got it to show up here, then we could take it back out of that navigation bar. But if you're able to find it in this external tool, then you don't even need to worry about the part of moving it into navigation. So yeah, it was just kind of a troubleshooting thing. Yeah. Does that make sense, Erin? Okay. So we're at 2.35, Chandra. I'm going to, is there anything else before I stop recording and then we can answer other questions? No, I'm good. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording.